So I have a quick story for you today. My wife raises sheep and every once in a while we'll have an animal that for some reason or another doesn't make it. Well, one of our favorites, he happened to uh, pass away. So I took him out in the field and buried this guy. They're baby doll sheep. They're smaller sheep. They don't get as tall as others. Uh, they're pretty cute and normally pretty friendly. But this guy did make it. So I put him out there hoping that one day I'd be able to dig him back up and do something to kind of memorialize him. So what we're going to do is take this skull and put some sugar skull elements all over it and then make a nice decorative piece out of this guy. I've already been working on this skull. You can see that. And I've done this with the UV laser and I have good settings for the UV laser. But you fiber folks, don't worry. Don't worry at all. As you can see, this is a little bit white. Well, why would that be a little white? Because it's coated with Brilliance Laser Ink. So that's uh, Brilliance Laser Ink. And so far I found that using Brilliance, you can get a really nice dark mark with your fiber laser. So stick around, we'll just jump right into it and I'll share my settings and show you how I've achieved the dark mark with both the UV laser and the fiber laser. Thanks for stopping by and I hope you enjoy it. So what you're gonna see here is the exact artwork that I used so far on the deer skull. What I did is I just started with this element, which is the spider web looking thing, and then kept picking and choosing which elements I wanted to add next. And where did I get the elements? Well, I have some Sugar Skull graphics that I uh, actually paid for from Vector Stock. So I'm just picking and choosing which element I want to use and basically organizing it and laying out the way I think looks pretty cool and fits the shape of the skull best. So basically we'll have to pick and choose what we want to do to the sheep skull in order to achieve that same effect. I'm just going to grab these and move them out of the way here. And I am using a UV laser. Now what I want to do is figure out what is the first thing I'm going to put on this skull. And once I figure out the first thing, then I'll just start building the sugar skull from there. And compared to the deer skull, at the top of this one, it's very narrow. So I need something narrow at the top, and then from there we can start working our way down. What I'm really liking is one of these flower patterns to go at the top, kind of the opposite of these two here. So I'll just figure out which one I'm going to use, and then alter the dimensions to fit. All right, folks, we are back in Lightburn. I had to switch the 150 lens. I don't have enough clearance to do the top of the skull the way I want. I'm gonna eventually lean it back a little bit and hopefully that'll give me enough clearance to use the 300 lens. So I'm gonna to have to use the 150 for the parts where I cannot tilt the skull. So, what I ended up choosing to do instead of the other graphic was to use this flower pattern. Now, when you're trying to grab a tiny graphic out of an area, it's easier to do it when you're in wire mode. So if you go to window and then wireframe, I'm just using wireframe course. And then you can always switch back to your field to see how things look. Uh, as far as how it's going to look on your project. So right now I have this flower. I'm going to frame it one more time. The skull is lined up. I'm framing it one last time. I'm going to switch you over to the camera on the skull so you can watch the engraving in process. And I'll zoom in. All right, we're back. And 
frame it one last time then let's hit go and hopefully it turns out well The settings that I'm using on the UV laser. If you are used running this on a thin piece of bone, you will have to run it faster or adjust your settings so you drop the power, otherwise you'll burn right through it. And depending on how hard the bone is, I've noticed that I might have to run a second pass just to get a nice deeper black and you know how sheeps, sheep like to ram each other. You know, the males are called rams for a reason. When they smack their heads together, it sounds like you're smacking two bowling balls together. Well, that bone's pretty thick and dense. So this is probably going to need two passes to get a nice dark mark. So while that finishes running, let's close our framing tab and take a look at the UV setting. It is a speed of 200, frequency of 30, Q pulse of 15, 0 0.01 millimeter line spacing, bi-directional fill. I'm running at a scanned angle of 45, two passes, auto-rotate with angle increment of 77, just as long as that's an odd number. That's all we need and fill sh all shapes at once. So that's the basic UV settings to engrave on bone. Of course, your mileage may vary, but that gives you a starting point at least. Now let's flip back over and watch this engrave finish up. You can see that second pass is darkening it up considerably. And to watch it in the camera and it's looking pretty good yeah I think I'm gonna be happy with that It's a little light in some areas, just that bone is 
is very, very dense. So I'm going to adjust the power by lowering the Q-Pulse and run it one more time with only one single pass. And you'll see the auto-rotate is in effect, so it's at a bit different angle than what it was the last pass. And this bone's thick enough, you don't have to worry about burning through it. And we should see it darken up considerably. I lowered the Q-Pulse from 15 to 10. And so far what I'm seeing on camera is already a, a little darker around the flower. In my effort of knowing when to say when, we're just going to cut it right there. That looks good. It's deep enough. You can really feel it. Hopefully that will focus. There we go. That looks good. All right, now we're going to bring on the challenge of trying to level this out enough that we get a consistent mark with that 150 millimeter lens across the surface. It's going to be tough. We'll give it a try. But it's going to have to be propped up like that in order to be level, as level as possible across this area where I'm going to put the next mark. The 300 millimeter lens would be easier However, I don't have the space, the height, to raise it up. The 300 millimeter lens would be ideal for this situation. However, I don't have the Z height to be able to raise the lens up high enough to get into focus. So we need to raise the jaw up pretty high to get the front of the skull as level as possible. And this looks like a job for the pan of ice. If you haven't used the pan of ice, they're extremely useful to have for your Galvo laser. Help you level and line up just about anything. And then all we need to do is find a spot to clamp on and this will hold it in place at the angle and height that we need it. All right, so what I'm going to do is use the pan of ice just to prop the skull from the front under the jaw, and that looks pretty good. It needs to come forward a little bit. All right, so the next piece I want to add is this decorative piece here. So I'm going to frame that. Get it lined up where you want it, and then proceed to mark this piece. The frame, I want to do the contour, and we'll see exactly where it is. Let you see that. Alright, that looks pretty straight. I just need to check focus and see how much I'm in or out. I'm using my 3D printed focal sticks, in case you were wondering. 